So hey everybody, what's going on? Today is an absolutely beautiful day. I'm going to head out and do a little solo trip. So follow me, I think it's going to be an awesome day. I can't wait to get out there because it's the first day that the flag is laying down low, the flag that flies on the bank by my house, and the water looks calm. So it's like holy mackerel, it's been like weeks before we can get out. So follow me, it's going to be an awesome day. All right, we got fish on. We got fish on. First fish of the day, I'm excited. Got some good head checks. Tuna. No color. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we got a baby tuna. <laughs> nope. No, we don't. There you go. Little bonito. For a tuna. I'll let him go to the kill him. Put a point in there. Alright, let's go. We gotta still catch some fish here. John, fish on. Holy crap. Nice. Down the open. Oh man, that looks like a nice mutton snapper to me. <clears throat> Oh, beast! A beast of a mutton snapper! Yeah, baby! <laughs> right in the corner of the mouth, man. He is a beauty. <laughs> nice. Nice. There we go. Let's check him out. How many inches are you there, Mr. Mutton? Squeeze the old tail. Come on. Come back here. Come on. <clears throat> He's just shy. Just shy of 20. Just, just shy of 20. Oh, I'm sorry. He's 20, almost just shy of 21. That's a good size mutton snapper right there. There you go. 21 inch mutton snapper. And you know what's going to happen to this guy. He is dinner tonight. Woohoo! Awesome. All right, so that was the first cast here. I just free lined a whole ballyhoo. And he just nailed it. So that was awesome. All right. I'm going to have a, uh, a beer to celebrate. It's a non-alcoholic beer, by the way. Man, Elizabeth's going to be happy. So am I. So the part I like the best about the muttons is, you know you got a mutton when he doesn't run into a rock like, uh, like the grouper do. Those groupers just take off right straight into a rock, cut you off. 
he hit it, he ran with it, and then he actually came out into the sandy area. As soon as he did that, I knew it wasn't a grouper. And I was hoping it was a mutton, and sure enough. Man, so 20, almost 21 inch muttons. I am in 11 feet of water, 11. So winter is still here. The water is, the water temperature is still only 74. And these muttoners are still inshore. All right, follow me, that was great. Fish on, fish on. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, this might be, this might be a grouper, I don't know. He's rubbing, he's rubbing out on those rocks. I gotta get him out of those rocks. I gotta get him up and out. Because he is hitting those rocks. He's a good sized fish too, he's heavy. We are gonna check the line after this one. Oh, it's Mr. Grouper. Ha! Ah, nice red grouper. Oof. Would be a keeper if it was grouper season. Definitely would be a keeper. <clears throat> this little patch wreath is on fire. Alright, I gotta get I gotta get the hook out of him. I'm using circle hooks. Um, really good quality circle hooks. And this he swallowed this thing, but I, I'm pretty sure I can get it out and save him. But it's just kinda kinda messed up. Alright, let me so let's do that. Reminds me of a big mouth bass. He's got this thing down there in his gut, damn it. All right, we are gonna cut this. We're gonna cut the line. I think he'll survive. I think he'll survive if I cut the line. So we're using, of course, non non-stainless steel circle hooks. All right, we're gonna let him go, see what happens. I am using nothing more than a circle hook and a whole ballyhoo. No weight, thrown out, letting it sink to the bottom, boom. So I'm gonna get back out there, I gotta re-rig, so follow me. We're gonna keep this going. All right, so Gamagatsu, the real ones, not the ones that are on the back and they're misspelled and it's in uh, another language other than English. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but maybe sometimes there is. So real Gamagatsus and uh, we're just gonna do a snail. Just a quick snail, get back out there as quickly as we can because they're out there. What I think I like best about this, I'm just snelling this up quick. What I think I like best about this particular spot is it's it's obscure. It's nothing. It's just a spot. It's uh, I don't think anybody's ever fished this. It's just some patch reef. That's it. All right, we're gonna tighten this up. All right, there it is. Bring it a little tighter. I don't want Elizabeth seeing me using my teeth. Or get mad at me. Alright, that's about it. I'm just gonna take a, uh, a whole ballyhoo and I'm gonna trim this tag. Take a whole ballyhoo, put them on there, off you go. Okay. So, fish on, fish on. Hey. 
Oh, not what we want. This is absolutely not what we want. I do not want a freaking eel. They're mean. They're nasty. And they are somewhat dangerous. Look at that dude. Look at that mouth on that guy. All right, so a little more eel. We are just gonna kind of get him cut close. Here's the deal. The wind is kicked up. It's uh, it's getting. I gotta get out of here. Is what the deal is. So just started up the boat. Got to anchor out and get that anchor up. And then we're gonna head on back in. And uh, it was an awesome day. Yeah. I mean, man, can't beat it when you get a you know a, a great mutton and a beautiful red grouper that was out of season. But I know where to come back and get them. So thanks a lot for following me. It was an absolutely great day. And I can't wait to get Elizabeth back out here on this spot because I think we're going to kill them next time we come out. All right, follow me. We're going to have a rough ride back. Yo, what's up, YouTube family? So, guess what? We're going to do another catch and cook because, um, well, because, because we caught that mutton snapper yesterday which was absolutely outstanding. And, you know, here's the deal. Here's the deal. That mutton was just about 21 inches. For me, that's about the best size. I mean, 18 is minimum. I like anywhere in between 18 and like 22 inches because the fillets are perfect. And I don't know, I don't feel like I'm wasting a big, huge fish by freezing it or whatever. I like fresh fish. And so we decided to do it a special way, one of my special ways, um, of cooking mutton snapper. I haven't seen it really done anywhere else. We do it with a variety of fish and or seafood and I, I call it seafood spaghetti but it's really a seafood sauce and with fish for me it's it's awesome. So let me run down the ingredients real quick and then I'll show you exactly what we're doing. So the first thing that you need anytime you do any kind of Italian cooking is some really good good olive oil. So in this case um, this, is, this is the olive oil that we've been using lately. It's organic got to have garlic. Um, we use a lot of garlic. We like garlic. Here's some fresh tomatoes. These are like the best tomatoes that I could find. If you know of a place down here anywhere in South Florida where I can get better tomatoes, let me know. I haven't had a great tomato since I left New York years ago. So these are Campari tomatoes and they, they taste like a tomato. Everything else tastes like cardboard or a piece of paper that's red and round. So anyway, these are Camparis. They're very good. They're, they're the best I can find. Always, always, always parsley with, uh, with spaghetti sauce, with a red sauce. Always use parsley, so some fresh sharp parsley. And then we always put in some uh, pitted Kalamatra olives. These are black olives. I think these are pitted, uh, but they don't have to be. Um, sometimes I just like them with the pits in. It doesn't really matter, but it adds an amazing flavor to a seafood sauce. And then my favorite is... The Tutto Rosso crushed tomatoes. It has basil in it. doesn't have to. Um, whenever you're using seafood, basil is kind of an option. Um, I like basil, and so I use it quite a bit. But we happen to have our own personal little basil here, our little basil plant that, uh, that I'm going to probably cut some fresh basil in and put it into the sauce almost at the end because the oil comes out of the leaves and just kind of just gives it a nice, fresh, fresh flavor. And then, of course, the star of the show is these two beautiful mutton snapper and fillets. And as you can see, this was like a, almost a 21-inch fish, and these fillets are just perfect. So we're going to wind up starting the sauce. We'll get the sauce going. And uh, once we get that sauce going, then these will lay in at the end, and we'll just kind of poach them up. It adds an amazing flavor to the sauce, and then we'll pour it over any kind of uh, your choice of spaghetti or 
Uh, rigatoni's. I think I'm gonna do rigatoni's tonight. I think Elizabeth, what do you have today? You have. Uh, uh, probably do my squiggly noodles. Oh, she does squiggly noodles. They're uh, they're uh, squiggly. I mean, yeah, squiggly. So here is Elizabeth's squiggly noodles, organic squiggly spaghetti style noodles. I like them because um, they're. They seem like spaghetti, but it's actually a vegetable, and there's very few carbs in it. So everybody knows I'm kind of low carb the majority of the time. I'm going to have that about twenty thousand pieces of that bread that you're going to make. So oh. yeah, some That's awesome garlic bread, which is also my favorite. Where do you see this garlic bread? And then of course my extra fancy rigatoni's for Dan. All right, so like a medium heat, and I'm going to coat the bottom of this pan generously with some olive oil those some olive oil as soon as that oil gets hot I'm gonna throw some fresh garlic in there it's all about flavor the sauce is all about flavor and so ah there is one other ingredient that I forgot you remember what that it is always bay always leaf. always in a sauce bay leaf, bay leaf. Final ingredient is bay leaf. I forgot about the bay leaf. This does an amazing thing to a spaghetti sauce and soups, but um, bay leaf always, always in the spaghetti sauce. By the way, we make this with scallops. We make it with crabs. It comes out really great with crab. Uh, sometimes we'll do a whole potpourri. We'll do some clams, some mussels, shrimp. We have to do that. We'll do a we'll do that cashew cook another time. That's hands down probably the best there is. All the flavors from all the seafood go into the sauce. It's it's absolutely outstanding. All right, we should have some. Uh, we should have some heat going on here. Let's see if we can. A little bit of. Psh. So we're gonna throw some of this garlic in there. Not all of it. This will get that oil infused with the garlic. So here's the deal. You don't want to you don't want to burn this. So you just want to just very gently brown it. And the way I'm going to bring down the temperature once I see it's the right right color and the garlic is right about right, I'm going to take these chopped up tomatoes. And the reason why I do this is because I want it to be a little chunky also. So this will bring the temperature down. We'll cook these tomatoes down just a little bit. We're going to throw some wine in there, then a bunch of the parsley. And then finally, last but not least, our first can of crushed tomatoes. That might be enough. So we're going to see. Uh, you can see some of them getting brown, so we're going to do this right now. Watch that. Watch that. This will calm down in a second. There we go. We're going to throw a handful of parsley in there right now. It may look like a lot, but you'll see it'll cook down into the sauce as we go. This is like this is this is the best. Man. We try we try to do pasta like Italian food or pasta every Sunday, some in some way, either the white sauce or the red sauce, or meat sauce, seafood sauce. But we caught this mutton, and it was like, bah, that's going to be what we need to do this. All right, so these are cooking down nice. They're getting soft. Again, we want it to be a little chunky, so now we're going to take and turn this heat down. Get it down probably pretty low. And let's get this first can in. I think so. I think one can is going to be enough. Because we've got to fit everything in here at the end. So, so we'll give this a quick stir. Turn it down low. Then we're going to throw a little bit of white wine. Any kind of wine you have, white wine, if it's good enough to drink, it's good enough to put in your food. If you wouldn't drink it, then I wouldn't put it in my food. So, just enough to kind of give it a little extra flavor. Again, all about flavor. All about the flavor. Alright, so we got those in. Uh, bay leaf going in. Uh, let's see, it's a small sauce. So we'll probably put two, two nice leaves in there. Again, all about the flavor. It just adds a little something to it. And then finally, something a little different maybe for some people, some black olives. 
I don't think we do this with meat sauce, do we? Mm -hmm. We only do it with seafood. Only seafood, yeah. But um, it adds something immeasurable to the stuff. Uh, Did you show them the front? Because it, it's yeah. got uh, oregano in it, too. Oh, I didn't realize it. It was a little bit of oregano. All right, so again, a little extra flavor in there. All right, yeah. cool. It's my favorite when you do that. All right, I'm going to give it a quick stir, and then I'm just going to put it on simmer. And here's the deal. You need to cook this sauce for a little while, not forever. I know people who cook a sauce for eight hours. If this cooks for 45 minutes, that's it. Uh, somebody taught me a long time ago, when you're making spaghetti sauce, you don't have to cook it for hours and hours and hours. If you do the acid in the tomatoes, winds up going kind of like sour. You eat tomatoes raw, so why would you cook them to death? The, big, the, the thing that we always go is like when we taste it, we go, is it still tastes new? But after a little while, the, all of the flavors blend together. And that's it. That's really all you need. So even if we do a meat sauce, we probably cook it. I'll bring it to a boil, drop it down. I'll uh, very, very simmer it for maybe 20 minutes. Then I'll bring it up to a boil and then shut it off and put the cover on and just let it sit for an hour. And then come back and reheat it up. And by then, it's probably usually done. So you don't have to cook a tomato sauce for eight hours or six hours. It's just an hour, maybe, an hour and a half tops. All right, so now we're going to put the heat up a little bit until it, till it bubbles. We get all those flavors going in. And this is all about your taste. I like, we like to put like some nice parsley. Parsley just kind of gets into that sauce and then just brings out all the flavors of the seafood. And the fish, the fish will go in last. That'll be like the last, I don't know, maybe at best 15 minutes, at best. So right now we're just going to bring this up to a boil. And then put it down to a simmer, and we're like, we're going to let it sit for a while. So for now, the fish is going to go back into the fridge just to kind of keep it cool. But we have to show you the mutton after all. We've got to show you the mutton. Ain't nothing like mutton. All right. And there we go. All right. So there we go. We're starting to bubble up nice. And let all of these flavors meld together. And then, like I said, at the end, we're going to throw some basil in. Now we're just gonna cover it. So we're back, and uh, we are. So here's our sauce. Uh, cooked it for about I don't know, probably less about an hour, and then we boiled it up and then shut it off, and it's just been sitting there for a while. So now that we're hungry and it's time to eat, put together some uh, garlic bread. Very simple, not really. Uh, I use olive oil, I use uh, butter, then I put some uh, garlic, <laughs> a lot of garlic, and then um, some paprika. And uh, today we happen to have fresh parsley, so I use fresh parsley. And then uh, to top it all off, a little cheese, a little Parmesan cheese. You're not going to tell me your secret ingredient? And then a little lemon zest, believe it or not, lemon. And then at the end, when it's all crunchy, then I squeeze lemon on top of it. So good. Shh, don't tell everybody. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's good? What do you think about my super duper? It's so good. It, the lemon makes a big difference. I don't know what it is, but it's so good. Mm -hmm. Shh, don't tell everybody, but try it. You'll see. Zest first. Not the lemon juice. Zest first. Slide it in the oven, and then when it's done, it comes out all steamy. Just squeeze some lemon on top of it. Oh, sauce is ready. The sauce is getting there. All right, so the sauce is just getting reheated. We're going to turn it down to simmer a little bit. we got our fish just about ready. And the only thing we're going to do here, believe it or not, is uh, we're going to make noodles. And then we're going to slide the fish in there and just let it, I guess for lack of a better term, I guess it poaches. I guess but, so. But uh, it just turns white and nice and thick. It's just, you'll see. A couple minutes, you'll see. So we're reheating the sauce, as you can see. And um, I'm about to lay this beautiful fish into the pan. So basically, this is it. It goes in, it gets covered up, and we'll put turn, we'll turn that heat on, and uh, it'll be done in a few minutes, and it'll be just fantastic. Wait till you see it. I got a little tiny piece here too. Okay, that's all of it. That's it, just kind of cover it up. And you see, look at your olives in there. See those olives? Okay. Get the cover. In the meantime, the uh, bread is in the oven. We're almost there. I'm 
very excited about this meal. About how long will it take? I'm thinking uh, probably because of the thickness of the fish, you're going to have to adjust for that. I would say 10 minutes probably, maybe maybe 12. And that's it. I want to overdo it. We'll take a look at it. We'll poke it with a fork, and if it flakes away, we're done. All right, it's getting there. That looks like a boiling cauldron. Underneath there is some delicious fish. Okay, so it's been uh, 14 minutes, and it, you can see it's just perfect. It just kind of flakes away, completely cooked through, and it's just it's beautiful. It's perfect. All right, so we're going to get out these last couple of pieces. There's some big pieces in here, by the way. This little piece out. Look at that. That's beautiful. And then one little piece here. There we go. And the rest is just savory sauce. Time to sauce the dish. All right. <laughs> I like we're keeping it separate. The fish in one and then the, the skitties in the other. Mm -hmm. I like it really saucy. Let me get your scoop. Yeah. I love those olives in there. I know. I was just thinking that, too. Yep. The olives are just amazing. I need you to try that fish while it's still nice and warm. Any piece? Any piece. And it does just flake off. It does, right? That's yeah. And that's how you know it's done, when it just flakes off like that. It's really good. It is so good. It's... Just yeah, you gotta try it. Amazing. It's like tender. It's not fishy at all, right? Like lots of people think that oh, I don't want to eat fish because it'll be fishy, which sounds like an oxymoron or something stupid. But mm -hmm. that fish is so good. It's tender and meaty and delicious. So here's a secret about fishiness. And if you are the kind of person who doesn't like the fishiness sometimes that are in some in some fish. Like we used to get bluefish and mackerel and they would be fishy. -er. And if you like that, that's great. But I'm not a big fishier kind of guy. But tomatoes and tomato sauce draws out that fishiness. This doesn't taste fishy at all, does it? Right? No, not, not at all. Nothing. Not at all. It's really delicious. And that's because of the tomato sauce. I don't know what it does. You got a nice piece of garlic in here too. Ooh. Probably my favorite way to eat fish. I mean, honestly. It's so good. It's so tender and delicious. I love fried fish, but this is the bomb. Yeah. Can't go wrong with this. No, it's perfect. Thank you, babe. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, we're going to eat. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the catch and cook. Um, I hope you enjoyed the cook, especially because uh, it just really just came out great. And we really appreciate you guys watching. And, um, yeah, it didn't get any better than this. Yeah, so. you guys are the best subscribers ever. Absolutely. Really appreciate the support, all your comments, and we just love you guys. Uh, you make all of this a whole lot of fun. Absolutely. So, you know the deal. Follow us. I had a button.
That looks good to me. Ooh, garlic bread. Oh, my favorite fish! Arr!